In this video, we are going to be discussing feeding and housing management for the orphan calf. In the event that a calf cannot be cared for by its mother, it is important for cow-calf producers to know how to properly care for and manage the calf. Proper feeding and housing management is critical for optimizing health and performance. Let's first talk about feeding. Fresh grain should be offered to the calf daily beginning in the first few days of life. Calves should have access to the grain at all times. At first, you may only want to offer a handful or two at a time so as not to waste any grain. As the calf grows and begins to eat more, you can start to offer more to accommodate this change. Grain intake is important because its fermentation in the rumen produces butyric acid, which promotes rumen growth, development, and maturation. The calf needs to have a functioning rumen in order to obtain nutrients from grain and forage after weaning. The goal is to get the calf to consume at least two pounds of grain per day within the first two months of life. Once this benchmark is reached, calves can then be weaned from milk. There are a few different types of grain available that you can choose from. This is an example of a textured starter grain. Here is another example of a starter grain. This one happens to be in the form of a complete pellet. The starter grain should contain at least 16 to 20 percent crude protein. This particular feed tag is for the textured starter grain that I just showed you. It is formulated to contain at least 18 percent crude protein. This tag also indicates that the grain is medicated. Calf starter grains may be medicated with a coccidiostat, such as Bovatec or Decox, to help prevent coccidiosis. Non-medicated grains are also available. Calves should have free access to the grain and water buckets at all times to promote grain intake. When setting up the feeding and watering area in the pen, it's a good idea to keep the grain and water pails separated to prevent water spills into the grain bucket, which can lead to mold growth. It's recommended to clean out any leftover grain from the grain bucket at least once a day to ensure freshness, so be sure you set up the area with this in mind. Remember, we're trying to promote increases in grain intake during this time, and old or moldy feed is not palatable to the calf. Feeding tip. If you are feeding milk replacer, it can sometimes be helpful to sprinkle a little bit of the milk powder on top of the grain during the first couple weeks after birth to help encourage the calf to explore the grain. You can also try hand feeding small amounts of grain after each milk feeding during the first week or so to encourage the calf's interest in the grain. A question that often arises is whether or not you should offer hay to these young calves. Studies in dairy calves have shown that hay isn't as effective as grain in stimulating the rumen development that is needed for successful weaning by two months of age. For this reason, it is encouraged to hold off on feeding hay until after weaning, or at least until after the first month or so, so that focus can be placed on reaching the target grain consumption of two pounds per day. Be sure that any hay offered to young calves is of high quality. Let's now take a look at water. Water is often the most overlooked essential nutrient on the farm. Calves should have access to water at all times starting shortly after birth. Water can be offered in a bucket or trough, but be sure that it's easily accessible for cleaning and refilling. Just as a reminder, feed consumption and water intake are positively related. So if water isn't available, grain intake will likely suffer. As another reminder, be sure that the water offered is clean and free of debris. Water should be assessed for cleanliness at least once per day. This water bucket here should be dumped and refilled. A good rule of thumb is to check the water status at each milk feeding. Remember, the goal is to encourage calves to start consuming grain as early as possible, and providing a clean, ample supply of water should be part of that effort. Let's now talk about housing. Housing shouldn't be too complicated. The important thing to remember when considering where to house the calf is that housing needs to accomplish two things. The first is to protect the calf from the elements, and the second is that it needs to provide adequate ventilation. There is a difference between a barn that is drafty and a barn that is well ventilated. 
Adequate ventilation is critical to help prevent respiratory illnesses. Most producers elect to house their calves inside a barn or a hutch. The pen should be kept clean and dry. To test whether or not the pen is dry enough, kneel down in the pen. If your knee is wet after standing, the pen is too damp. In colder weather, keeping a dry pen is critical for keeping calves healthy. A variety of materials can serve as bedding, but commonly used bedding materials include sawdust, straw, or hay. This pen shown here is bedded with hay. Here is an example of a makeshift pen constructed inside of a barn. Remember that when housing inside a barn, it's important to ensure adequate ventilation to help prevent respiratory illness. This is an example of an outdoor calf hutch housing system. This system is nice and relatively inexpensive, especially if you don't have access to a barn or other permanent structure. Hutches generally have fewer ventilation issues when compared to a barn, though ensuring adequate dry bedding is important, especially in colder weather. A question you may have after the calf is weaned and eating well is, when can I integrate the calf with the rest of the herd? The short answer is that it depends. One option is to introduce the calf to the rest of the herd within a few weeks of weaning if the weather is favorable. Another option might be to wait until all other calves are weaned. Regardless of when you choose to integrate the calf with the rest of the herd, it's important that the calf will have access to high quality feed. Be sure to monitor the calf closely during the first few weeks after adding him to the group to make sure that he is adapting well.